Brother Watkins informed me that he'll be coming from Genesis. We read it earlier. Genesis 50, 5 0. Genesis 50, last, last chapter of Genesis, verses 15 through 21. And Minister Watkins said that after the period of meditation, he's going to tell y'all the man who was extremely careful, extremely careful. So at this time, we have a moment of meditation. And the next voice after that would be that of our own brother and minister, Charlie Watkins. Amen. Good morning to all the saints of God out there in Bible land. We certainly thank God for you and bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say happy Valentine's Day. Amen. And and not only that, it, it, it seems like uh, Black History Month is, is proliferated this year. Uh, so many of Blacks that have gone before us in various walks of life, uh, those that have invented uh, those that have contributed to the freedom uh, uh, of slavery, uh, and also those in the civil rights uh, movement. And, and, and there's been hundreds of thousands of people who have lost their lives. And to this day, uh, February 14th, 2021, we're going to be preaching uh, from Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 through 21. I'm going to read it again and have a, a word of prayer uh, before we get started. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us. This is the King James and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did to him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, thy father did command before he died saying, so shall you say unto Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now the trespass of your brethren and their sin for what they did unto thee evil and now we pray thee for their trespasses of the servant of god thy father and joseph wept when they spake unto him and his brother also went and fell down before his face and they said behold we be thy servants and joseph said unto them fear not for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring this pet, bring to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now, therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones, and he comforted them and spake kindly to them. And I have for a thing the man who was extremely careful, the man who was extremely careful. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, it's our prayer, Lord, this morning, during the busy walks of life, when, when so much is designed to come up against us, that we be extremely careful, that we be cautious, 
that we be not only cautious, but precautious to think beforehand of the trouble that could possibly lie down the road. So Father, help us to do what's right and pleasing in thy eyesight. Help us to be men and women who are extremely careful in this life we live that God will get the victory from the things that we do and say that we bring glory to him. Bless us now, Lord, as we go down through this message. In the name of Jesus, we ask all things. Amen. The man that was extremely careful. Let me hasten to say you've probably already noted that at the onset of this message that the man who was extremely careful was none other than Joseph. Of all the times he was mistreated, I can say that he was extremely careful because he never sought revenge or to get even. He never even walked around with a chip on his shoulder. Joseph in the Bible portrays a picture of what forgiveness looks like. This is why I can call him the man who was extremely careful. For us, we can easily fall into one of the categories that I'm about to mention. Someone hurt you. Someone has mistreated you. Someone has disappointed you. And you've probably heard this before. If none of these things has never happened to you, just keep on living. On the two-way street of forgiveness, the one doling out the hurt, the perpetrator, they need forgiveness as well as the one, the person that have been hurted as well also need forgiveness. That's why I called it a two-way street. Like Joseph, don't allow yourself to become a victim trapped in a sea of bitterness. Joseph teaches us how to be victorious opposed to being a victim. That you too can be a man or a woman who is extremely careful. I know it may seem easy for me to sit here on Zoom and ask you the question, where do you fit in on the kaleidoscope of forgiveness? That there is a difference between being bitter and being forgiven. Forgiveness is based on something you did or what someone did to you. You may not be the perpetrator, the one that committed the act. However, you can become bitter on what you perceive, whether it's real or unreal. But the fact still remains, either you have forgiven a person or have not. Either you need forgiveness 
or you don't. Then aren't you glad that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for the sin of the whole world? That you would be forgiven of your sin, past, present, and future. Amen. That sometime like Joseph, it appears that this is a setup. That you didn't ask for it, that you didn't see it coming, but all of a sudden you woke up one morning and found yourself in the midst of hurt and pain and misery, whether you was in the right place at the wrong time or in the wrong place at the right time, keep in mind the fact that God was using Joseph. In Genesis chapter 37 through 50, the Bible talks about the patriarch that we know as Joseph. Because of his closeness with God, the Bible reveals to us why he was extremely careful. Pause with me momentarily while I hit the rewind button and look back over a series of events that placed Joseph in the pit, that placed him in Potiphar's house that placed him in prison with the butler and the baker. And finally, that placed him in the palace of Pharaoh as the prime minister of Egypt, second in command of all the land. In the rewind, we see a man by the name of Abram who was told to leave his country and go to a place that God would show him. And then when he arrived in Canaan, a famine, a famine hit and he began to push on down towards Egypt where the children of Israel would spend in excess of 400 years in slavery. And it was prophesied in the Bible that that would happen to them in Genesis 15, 13. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that the seed, thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and you shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. When Abraham was, when Abraham was 100 years old and, and Sarah was 90, they had a son of promise by the name of Isaac and Isaac uh, end up, married a woman by the name of Rebecca and she had twins by the name of Esau and Jacob. Esau was a red haired, hairy man. The Bible prophesied that the older, that the, the children in Rebecca's womb, that the older boy would serve the younger boy, and that there were two nations in her womb. This is the reason why when she was given birth and, and Esau came out first, that Jacob grabbed his heel. I'm going somewhere with the information about these two sons uh, uh, of Jacob. And then we see that Jacob also had two sons by the name of Joseph and Benjamin, where we are today. But there was a problem. Joseph played favorites with his sons. He, because they were children of his older age. 
Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors. Joseph's ten brothers hated him because of the, the favoritism that he was showing to the younger brothers. Not only that, Joseph was in the Bible what we call a dreamer. And he shared his dreams with his father and his brother that one day he would rule over them and that they would bow down to him. And, and, and that actually happened because on repeated occasions, when they went to Egypt for food, they end up bowing down to Joseph. I want to momentarily look at Joseph's dreams in Genesis chapter 37, starting with verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed, for behold, you were binding sheaves in the field, and, and my sheave arose and stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood around about and bowed to my sheaves. And his brother said to him, Thou shalt indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his uh, words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told the brethren, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and the sun and the moon and the eleven stars shall bow to me. And he told it to his father. His father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you dream? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed bow down ourselves to thee on the earth? In this message of the man who was extremely careful that we too also in the lives that we live must be extremely careful. Well, how, brother preacher, how can I be extremely careful? You can be extremely careful by, by being like Joseph and, and not harboring ill feelings and evil thoughts in your heart. And that could be dangerous because sometimes the things that you ponder in your mind and obsess over and over again, that one day you might want to bring it to fruition and it may manifest itself in your life. This is why you must be extremely careful. I said it earlier that Joseph was a picture, a portrait of forgiveness. He paints a picture for us, the epitome of forgiveness and what forgiveness looked like. It's, a, it's also a staunch lesson on us how idolizing a child can dismantle an unravel a family. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I thought to myself, I wonder what, have ha what would have happened if Joseph, would, if Jacob would have made a colorful coat for all twelve of his sons. When you look at the life of Joseph's father, Jacob, what you see 
in the Bible is a thread of deception. Rebecca and Joseph got together and deceived their father Isaac in his old age, having him pretend to be Esau while he went out to hunt for venison. We know the story. And then Rebecca uh, knew how angry Esau was and had uh, 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 Jacob go to live uh, with uh, her brother Laban and who the deception continued to follow Jacob and he worked seven years for Leah, but then he worked seven more years, 14, 14 for the woman that he actually loved. Jacob, every time Laban would change his wages, Jacob came up with a scheme to make him have just as many or more sheep than Laban because he knew how to put uh, special branches in the water to, uh, to make the sheep spotted or brown. We all know how Joseph was sold into slavery. Jacob, his father was careless. Every time you see uh, there's a reason for you to be careful, you also see someone in your life that's careless. Brothers and sisters, you ought to be extremely careful when there's careless individuals around you. Amen. Joseph's father, he was careless in making and, and showing uh, a favoritism. And, and he was careless in sending Joseph to see what his brothers were doing. We call that being a snitch. And then his brothers, when they saw him coming, they said, here come this dreamer, let us throw him in a pit. And they threw him in a pit and, and Reuben uh, wanted to come back and, and, and get him. But Judah, these, when they saw the Israelite traders coming by, uh, uh, they pulled him out of the pit and sold him into slavery. And they put goat's blood uh, on, on, on his colorful coat and showed it to his father as if though Joseph had been eaten by a wild beast. And we see that when he was slow, sold uh, into slavery from the pit that he went into, uh, he was sold to Potiphar and that he was in Potiphar's house. And he was second in command over all that Potiphar's had. But then when Potiphar would leave the house, Potiphar's wife would make advances towards him. But Joseph, being a man of God, refused her advances towards him. She was careless and Joseph was careful. Joseph was careful not to succumb to her advances towards him and 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 she screamed and 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 left it and Joseph left his coat and she said this Hebrew boy has raped me to all the servants and she told her husband uh, Potiphar and he had Joseph place from the pit to Potiphar's house to the prison dungeon. I heard one man say that Potiphar's wife failed Cougar 101. And, and, and not only that, this is Valentine's Day and allow me to add live for just one moment that she didn't 
uh, only uh, not pass Cougar 101, but she didn't pass Valentine's 101. The, uh, I don't know where she was when they was offering the class principles of marriage, Valentine's 101, but she plotted and schemed against Joseph and he was thrown in the prison. And, and you have to, to observe and notice that, that everything about Joseph and him being extremely careful, although it appeared that it was costing him, but he was in every position that he was placed in, that he was rewarded. He was second in charge at Potiphar's house. When he was thrown in the prison, he was put second in charge over all of the prisoners of the war, war, wars. Because of his steadfastness and walking with the Lord, God have rewarded him. And, and the scripture says, God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And when brothers and sisters you are extremely careful it won't go for not it might seem like that that you're floundering uh uh going through it you're struggling trying to get through it but god has his eyes on you amen but when joseph was in prison there was a butler and a baker that both had dreams and Joseph interpreted their dreams that the butler would be restored in three days, but the baker would be beheaded. The baker was restored and, and he, he had asked the, and the, uh, the butler was restored and he had asked him when they was in prison, when you get released, could you put in a good word for me? Could you remember that there's a man in prison? And then when Pharaoh had two dreams, the butler remembered that there was a man in prison that was able to interpret the dream and Joseph said, does not interpretation belong to God? Now, the Bible says that God speaks to us through his word. However, God is sovereign. He can do what he wants to, when he wants to, how he wants to do it. I'm not going to second guess or question what he's capable of doing. Man. Joseph was extremely careful. And we too, as the body of Christ, are to hold out and hold on to God. He'll work it out for you, but you got to trust in him. You have to be long suffering and, 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 and depend on God to get you through whatever it is that appears to be a blockade for you. Last week, uh, I had in my notes that that being unforgiven, this was before the Super Bowl came on. I had in my notes that being unforgiven was like being on the one yard line with the ball. And, and if you can recall during the game, the Super Bowl uh, between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that there was one moment where the chief, uh, where the chief stop uh, had a goal line stand uh, against the Bucks, and they stopped them when it was fourth and one, and that was their uh, finest moment 
during the whole the whole entire game in Matthew chapter 6 and, and sometimes it seems like when we have heavy hearts and and we're not willing to forgive and the Bible talks about that if we don't forgive that God won't forgive us and sometimes we're in a fourth and, and one situation. But I want you to be able to, if I can use a sports illustration, I want you to be able to make your way in and see the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 6, when, when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, uh, this is what he said. Verse 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. It's in the book. But if you forgive not their trespasses, you want to hold on to that grudge. You 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 want to sink in the quicksands of, of bitterness. It says that if you forgive not men that, uh, and this, this is a, a, a hard, and, and the human emotion and the flesh, uh, uh, the disciples fell asleep when, when Jesus was praying, and, and three times he asked, asked them to watch while he prayed. And he told them, could not you watch for one hour while I pray? And then finally he said, sleep on, my brother, and take your rest. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. Fourth down and one. Joseph was a man that was extremely careful. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. The scripture says to be kind one to another, to be tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. It may not be the easiest thing for you to do, but it's the best thing for you to do. I have four sisters and three brothers. And, and I've seen some of the things playing out with what happened with Joseph and his brothers in my own family. And it teaches us that in the life you live, that every time there's someone that's careless, you have to be a man or a woman who's extremely careful. And what I mean by being extremely careful is to be steadfast, my brethren and sisters, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. 
that no matter what come what may, don't don't throw in the towel and, and say, I give up, uh, I'm defeated. Keep on trusting and depending on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and sometimes it's, it's comfortable. And, and when you don't want to forgive someone else, what you're saying is that I, I want to have a comfortable setting, but I want everyone else to be uncomfortable. That's what you said. I want them to be miserable and I want to be happy. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. The Lord Jesus Christ, he asked, Father, how can I allow this cup to pass from me? He left his heavenly abode where he was comfortable and came down to a sin-cursed world to die for your sins and my sins. Amen. Jesus Christ did. And it may not be seem easy for us, but you can do it too. I used to see people when, when their sons and daughters uh, uh, would be murdered and I would see the mother or the father of the victim come on national D TV and say I know you murdered my son I know you murdered my daughter but I want you to know that I don't hold it against you that I forgive you I said wow that's deep in the flesh you might want to hold on to some of these things but they can be accomplished. You can be a man or a woman who is extremely careful. Jesus Christ said that the things that are impossible for men are possible with God. for God. Yes. That Thank it you. can be accomplished. Amen. In the text, in Genesis chapter 50, the brothers was, was, they was holding on to the guilt of what they had done to their brother, Joseph. And, 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 one of the uh, when when a person passes and and then you say what the deceased has said and well when he was living uh, he wanted me to get all of his cars come on now how you going to come up and say something that the person said now that they are in the grave that's probably why it's important that that you get a, a living will and a last will and testament so that there's no conflict when the time comes up uh, with the deceased. Jacob had died. And one of his, uh, Joseph had died. And, and one of his last requests was that you carry my bones into Canaan and bury me. And, and 80 years later, Joshua buried Joseph bones in Canaan. In the text, the brothers were more concerned about, well, now that uh, Jacob is dead, Joseph is going to get even with us now. We see, but we see that's one of the reasons why Joseph was called the man that was extremely careful. If, if something is working for you, stick to what's working. 
Be extremely careful. Don't let your peers, don't let your friends, don't let the world pressure you into doing something that's out of the will of God. You have to be like Joseph, be extremely careful and at no time. Now, I know there was periods and, and incidents where I said, well, well, what's going on with Joseph when he was putting the, when they came to Egypt to get the food and, and he put the money back uh, in their sacks and then he caught up with them and bought them back and, and placed Simeon in ward and said for, for, for me to release Simeon, you got to go back and, and bring back Benjamin. And then they brought back Benjamin and, and then he put his cup in Benjamin's sack. And at the end, he ended up sending for his father and, and his father left Canaan and came down to Egypt and, and Joseph uh, had prepared a place for him uh, asking Pharaoh a place named Goshen and 70 descendants of, of Jacob ended up residing in Joseph and Joseph was a posterity. Earlier, I said that it was two nations in Rebecca's womb when, when I said Esau and, and Jacob. And the one nation was the nation of Israel because Jacob's name, I believe it's in Genesis 17, was turned to Israel. You must be extremely careful when you don't, don't make decisions when you're under pressure. Put some time between you and, and, and the thought and the decisions uh, that you make. Uh, you too can be just like Joseph and be extremely careful. Yeah. Walk with the Lord and talk with the Lord. Believe in him and, and, and trust in him. For us, it's a strong lesson in the book of Genesis not to be quick to overreact. You know, when you when you upset sometimes, sometimes you can say and do some things that you can regret, but not to be quick to, to be extremely careful. And and not overreact. One of the things my mother used to tell me all the time, I don't think you, when I used to get in trouble, you, what were you thinking about? You, you don't think, you just act. But being extremely careful is taking the best look at the best picture. Forgiveness. Fourth and one, it's always the best look and the best thing to do. Getting even was the furthest thing away from Joseph because he was the man who was extremely uh, careful and verse 21 of chapter 50, let us know that Joseph was not thinking about doing anything to his brother. As a matter of fact, he was thinking about helping, how he was going to help them. Now, therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Now, what would you do if someone threw you in the pit? What would you do if your brother sold you into slavery? Joseph was released from prison, not, not to the Potiphar's house that had him placed in prison, but to another Potiphar's house, uh, to, but to Pharaoh's house. But can you imagine Potiphar saying, uh, Joseph is in charge of all the food, and I had him thrown in prison. 
keep doing what's right even when things look bleak and dim for you. Yeah. This is my time, but if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to extend that invitation for you. If you uh, have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and I know we're in a pandemic and, and things, uh, uh, worship, uh, we've been worshiping on Zoom, uh, but you may have been out of fellowship even before the COVID hit. But I would like to take this time out to invite you into the body of Christ. That Romans 10, 13 says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you confess today that you need to be forgiven, that you want to turn over a new lease on life, that I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can do that on Zoom right now because the Lord knows your heart. Yeah. Amen. Uh, we're going Amen. to uh, uh, offer Christ up for everyone that would like to receive him. And But before we uh, move any further, again, we would like to say Happy Valentine's Day, uh, Black Yay. History. There's so many different uh, components and and I hope that and pray that you took something away. This is a powerful message about being extremely careful because off, more often than not, I've even done it myself. I have more, um, said in my mind what I'm going to do and what when I the next time I see this person, this is what I'm going to say and this is what I'm going to do. I wish I had known this message back then. 30 years ago. You don't have to. The, the Bible says that vengeance is mine, that I will repay. It's true. To put it in the Lord's hands. Amen. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the glory and majesty, dominion and power, hence now and forevermore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we just thank God for you. Be with him, walk with him, talk to him, and he'll tell you that you are his own, that you've been bought with the price, the, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the man who was extremely careful. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Amen. That's Amen. my time, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Amen.